Welcome back to Bissell Maple Farm. I'm Nate Bissell. If you're new to the channel, what we do is we're a maple syrup company. Uh, we're a family that makes maple syrup. We bottle maple syrup and we sell maple syrup equipment to help farmers make their crop. There are two locations in this episode. Uh, one location is what we call the Sugar Works. That is a, an old General Electric plant that my wife and I bought five or six years ago. And we turn that plant into what we call the Sugar Works. And that is where we bottle maple syrup. That is where we um, make maple syrup. So we will haul the sap from the farm to the Sugar Works and make it into maple syrup. The wood yard. So my wife and I about 10 years ago bought what we call the tiny house right next to the, the my parents farm that's where we had a firewood business it is true we were making firewood and putting videos on youtube before it was cool but our timing was just off please stick around to the end of the episode this is one of our longest episodes yet but you will be rewarded if you stick around thanks for supporting us if you like what we're doing smash that like button, click subscribe. It really helps us out. Enjoy. So I'm out here at the farm. Austin's been cleaning up. I'm gonna show you the work Austin's been doing in the wood yard and around the tiny house here. We would like to get the sawmill under a roof. When we bought that factory, that old General Electric factory, there was a mezzanine in there. A couple I-beams and four legs. The I-beams bolt together. We took that down about five, six years ago, and it's been sitting out back, and I've been thinking about a way to use it. What are you doing, Austin? You're ready to move a lot of junk. I see you're messing with the junk over here. So this was a mezzanine. Okay. Those are the four posts. And I see everything is sitting on the two I-beams we need. How tall are those? Those look like eight-footers. And a, a sawmill shed, sawmill shanty, sawmill structure. Uh, I'd like to get that thing undercover. I'd like to get me undercover out of the sun, rain, snow. So my dad, Austin, and I are going to be working on that. Um, I'll turn you around here because I'll let you know what we're doing. This is a spruce tree. And I came out to measure it because I'm curious if I'm, I'm going to be able to make two beams, uh, two structural beams out of this thing. So... Let's go measure the diameter on this spruce tree. It's a big tree. <laughs> I think this is gonna fit on my sawmill. Okay. You know what? This might actually fit on the sawmill. How about that? I'd say it's definitely under 30 inches. It's got a lot of branches. This is probably like the worst tree to mill with all the knots that are gonna be on here. Like that guy sticking out. He's gonna have to go. I need to get at least 50 feet out of this. And I want two 12 inch by 12 inch beams that'll sit on those I-beams. And then we'll run the rafters off those, put some purlins across, and then put some metal roof. But uh, that's the plan. Look at this. We do need to scrape and paint. So looks like Austin started scraping and we are gonna scrape and paint the tiny house and the garage. Got some projects over here, but Man, Austin's handy. So we got some lumber to mill, but I'm gonna hook up the trailer, take it to the factory, throw the I-beams and the uprights on there. All right, Austin, what are you doing, man? Strapping these down, these monster I-beams. So what is, uh, where'd you get this? <laughs> Underneath all that junk, right next to the beehive. How many times you get stung today? I think they only got me twice. So do you know what these are from? Couldn't tell you. These were a mezzanine. It was an office mezzanine in the factory. Is that here when you bought it? Yeah. Right in front of the cooler. This sat in front of the cooler. The forklift could barely get through. It like that was like an inch of clearance. So if you hit a bump, you might hit the I-beam. So what we're gonna do is turn this into a sawmill, what do you say? Sawmill shed? Yeah, mill shed, something like that. Sawmill shanty. I don't like shanty. I'll say shed. So we gotta cut some uh, wooden beams to go across. I think I found the original bolts that these were put together with. That never happens. Like, what are the odds? Because they're white. We actually put a thing where we could find it and right. then needed it again. Well, how many of those bolts do you have? They're white, definitely. Look at this, look at the flange. Four. The flange on these probably had white paint on them. Oh, heck yeah, man. 
we need what 16 of those i think so i do think we should paint these what do you think scrape them prime them paint them yeah you want to do that before or after they're put together um i don't know be easier before but i know we're kind of itching to get this shed up so yeah i think it'll be fine after. let's let's build the shed and then painting the poles can be one of the things that we procrastinate forever because we always have to have something that we should be doing right this can be it the painting yeah the scraping and the painting and let me go back in and grab the rest of it yeah just grab as many as you need So the idea is to build a structure right here over top of the mill and keep the sun off of our backs and skin. So I think the goal is we're going to drop this in this open field. I haven't figured out what we're going to do. I might just put that sawmill shanty right up against this building and, uh, you know, basically extend it out. That'd be 35. Oh, it is bigger than I thought. So is that too big to run on your, well, if it is, no. you just go up 10 feet and... Well that, and why don't we just take and skim the edge off with a 25 inch chainsaw bar. Take it down flat. Your chain, but... You think? Uh, it depends on how much you do. So, sure. a regular chain, if you try to cut long ways through, it'll mess with it. It'll do it, but it won't like it. They uh, make ripping ripper. chains. Yeah, they do. I yeah, wish I had an Alaskan sawmill to do this, just to take the edge off. That's lithium dioxide. It's going to take the edge off. So my dad built one, and it works okay, but I don't think it's worth for you. Not buy one. Don't, don't make it. It's monkey not worth the it. time he put into building it. Yeah. So this is 33. What is it? It's what, 35 you said? That's, yeah, 35. Dang. What was I looking at? I was so optimistic this would fit on the mill. Oh, well, if you go up 15 feet. Yeah, but will I get two 22-foot beams? Yeah. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of wood here, Austin. That's like 10 feet right there. And oh, yeah? Not a quarter of this tree. I think I was reading somewhere the branches go every one foot. They grow out a foot a year. So... That's one year growth, another year growth. You got 18 inches there. So, who knows? Charlie, you want to go to the farm? Do you want to go to the farm, Charlie? Charlie? Do you want to go to the farm? Good morning, good morning. I'm headed to the farm. I got my saw dog with me. <laughs> He's going to help me. So we're going to cut down that spruce tree today and um, maybe get, uh, get a log or two on the sawmill. That's the goal. Charlie, we're going to have to start calling you Tina. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. Boy, oh boy. A little bit of play and you're just out of breath, dude. Alright. 
So what I've got here behind me is, uh, this was an old mezzanine. I've got two 20 foot I-beams and I've got these two, uh, these four posts. They have flanges welded on the end and I'll take you in for a closer look here. You can see that there's a bolt pattern here on the bottom of this flange and on the bottom of this I-beam, there's a bolt pattern. And somehow Austin was able to locate most of the original bolts that actually had white paint on them. So the plan here is to set this up. So we got our sawmill, this is our wood yard. And the idea here is to build the sawmill shed right here alongside this building. So we'll put an I-beam going this way. We'll put an I-beam 20 some feet out going this way. So the uprights will be here, 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 and then here. And then we need some wooden timbers to go across. I wanted to span about 20, 22 feet. And that's when my dad suggested the huge spruce tree here that uh, it had some brothers and sisters over here that have since fallen and taken out power lines. So we think this tree is, you know, it's a liability. We've been talking about taking it down, but uh, I don't know what this is, maybe 75 feet tall, but there should be enough timbers in there that we could, you know, run from the I-beam to I-beam. So this is kind of what I've had in my mind for some time and Austin's been helping me. Um, he dug those I-beams out for me yesterday, the uprights, and uh, now we gotta drop this spruce tree and then uh, the plan is to start building the sawmill shanty and so we can work on some other projects. I do have, I'm starting to get the proper PPE. I do not have chainsaw chaps yet. It's in the works. Austin and I are getting measurements. We are gonna order some chainsaw chaps. So, so here's the plan. Plan is, I cut that spruce down and as you can see, I got a nice new helmet here with ear protection screen, which is nice because you can at least uh, get a breeze through there. If you're looking for something like this, I'll put a link down below. What was that?
Yeah. So I think you want to try to clean some stuff up. Yep. It with me. Um, and then where do you bore? Behind the hinge. You come in behind. I mean this. So I'm gonna clean the face up. Is what you're saying? I would. Yeah, make it a nice clean. You know, point where the two points meet up. Make it nice and clean. And then for this guy, I don't know. I'd like I said, professional amateur. I'd leave three inches. Four inches. Things got to be thirty-six inches in diameter. It's a pretty big tree. Yeah, it is. So I got to clean that up so it comes to a point. So I'm gonna have to take the bottom off. Is what you're saying? I'd shave that bottom down Just to a nice clean point. I, I, yep. I think it still work, but I notice everybody makes sure it's a clean point. Yeah, and I think what it is is it's uh, this is your steering wood, right? So you set your hinge up so you have equal distance on both sides, and you're gonna have it fall in that direction. And you come back, and for me, I leave a, a decent hinge, or a, a decent trigger at the back, drive my wedges in, and then for me, I know, limited mobility, I make sure I have a super clear path to escape two ways, and watch the wedges while you're making your, while you're cutting the trigger, and when they start moving, I move. So, but that's me. Kev, what's your channel again? Bionic Life. Bionic life. So Kev is uh, Kev's my therapist. We talk to each other often about YouTube and algorithms and scratching our head, trying to figure out what's working, what's not. So we talk just about every day about it. Just about. Just about every day. So believe it or not, not everybody's interested in creating YouTube videos. Yeah, if I say YouTube to my wife one more time, I'm gonna get punched. Yeah. How about Jess? Ah, Jess is good with it. She's pretty. She's tolerant. She, she feigns tolerability. Yeah, she's good at it. Yes, she is. You think I would clear the sawmill? <sighs> I think so. It's going to be close. Four, five, six, eight, three, nine, thirty, thirty-two. Thirty-two, Kev. So thirty-two times three. I have I have ninety-six feet. You said that was eighty. We're good. So cut this wedge at 80% of the diameter of the tree and I went too far so I'm gonna have to clean this up because this is what steers it so that's the way it's going and then I have to do theoretically then I have to do a bore cut about three inches on the same don't you want to be up higher it can be at the same level or up higher yeah and what that does is it prevents it from kicking back if there's a notch. No, your holding wood keeps it from kicking back. So I have to bore cut at the same plane as the that cut right there. Bore cut on this side, come around because my bar is only 25 inches and this is 36 inches. Take it all the way almost to the back and I leave what they call a trigger. And then I drive wedges in to start tipping the tree. And then when I'm ready, I just cut that trigger and it should fall at the direction we set. That's the plan anyway. I better make sure I got a good escape route over here. Can't believe I left black walnut standing. There's one here, here, and here. I mean, I can tell you right now, Sandy would make three two-by-fours out of that one. Absolutely. And a, and a one-by-two. Just teasing you, Sandy. So I want to get this down so Austin can do all the work of delimbing it while we're in the shade.
Alright, it's warm. I just need to drink my second bottle of water. Here's the plan. Um, I brought my cuts around to meet at my trigger and they don't line up. And I'm too tired to cut another line. I don't know if I should or not, to be honest with you. But I'm going to start putting wedges in, get back to the trigger, just do the best I can. Let's see how it goes. This cut. Here it slopes back quite a bit. And I want to bring it here. This cut goes in, kind of goes upward. So I think I'm gonna try to meet up with this cut right here. Metal wedges. You got metal wedges? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. I got too many cuts in this thing. Almost going, Kev. Come on. Come on. Come on. Charlie. That kid. Come here. Down. Down. Know him better. The crap, you'll hatch it. I'm gonna lose it. Not. <laughs> Crack. It's going. It's going. Yep.
Just like I had planned. Yeah. It's gonna be really quick cutting branches off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you do it. Just like we drew up. Right, Dad? Yeah. Just like we drew it up. You can see what we're holding it. What's that? <laughs> Not much. No. <clears throat> there wasn't much trigger left on this, Kev. <laughs> no. I have to admit, just like in wrestling, sometimes you don't have to hit the move just perfect and it works out. We're professional amateurs. I like that. <laughs> it's a little thin on top. Let me get my hat. So, this tree is down. It's probably not wise to walk under it, but this tree is down. It's probably uh, seven, eight feet in the air, and uh, we're gonna mill it up. So, now the work starts. Hey, thanks for joining. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one.